So in today's video, we are going to see regarding the very important topics which doesn't come under any kingdom. That is mycorrhiza. virus viroids prions lichens okay these are the things we are going to see in today's video so let's begin with mycorrhiza So what is mycorrhiza? Myco is fungus. Rhiza is roots. So roots of higher plants. For example, pinus plant will have a mycorrhizal association. Higher plants, for example, gymnosperms. So fungus is getting shelter as well as food. At the same time, fungus is giving absorption of water and minerals. Mycorrhiza name was given by Frank. So the name Mycorrhiza is given by Frank. In the year 1885, mycorrhiza is of two types. We have ectomycorrhiza and we have endomycorrhiza. So let's see what are these ecto and endomycorrhiza. Ecto means outside, endo means inside. So this term, till this, uh, we can make up very easily. Let's see the ectotype of mycorrhiza. So ectomycorrhiza. Ectomycorrhiza, in this type of mycorrhiza, the surface of the roots are completely covered by pseudoparenchymatous sheet. sheet. Pseudo parenchymatous sheet formed by fungal hypha. And fungal hypha enter intercellularly in the cortical cells of roots. So it enters intercellular, not intra, intercellular. If you go with endomycorrhiza, that will enter intracellularly, which means inside the cell. That's why you call it as endomycorrhiza. It enters intercellularly that's why we call it as ectomycorrhiza. There you don't find the pseudoparenchymatous sheet. Here you will be finding pseudoparenchymatous sheet. So the fungal hypha which arises from this pseudoparenchymatous sheets limited up to only the outer cortical cells and will form a net called Hartig net. So the net which will be formed is Hartig net. And ectomycorrhiza occurs in, you can see for pinus, mainly for pinus, you can see this ectomycorrhiza. And you have phagus, you have abyss, oak, eucalyptus. So the eucalyptus is the tallest angiosperm. Okay, so these plants you can see the ectomycorrhiza, pinus, phagus, abyss, oak, eucalyptus. And fungus are the mainly, what type of fungus you will be seeing is Pesidiomycetes. Pesidiomycetes where usually mushrooms, uh, smut, rust, puffballs, uh, these things you will see in Pesidiomycetes. Uh, the sexual organs will be absent. The sexual spores, we call it as basidio spores. These things you can see here. And uh, 
ectocarpus the spore uh, formation will be ectocarpus so the basidiomycetes will be usually clavasia amanita amanita is the poisonous mushrooms we otherwise call it as uh, death chair as well and the root hairs are absent on the root root hairs are absent this fungus is mainly helpful for the absorption of water and minerals due to the presence of fungus absorbed you on the surface of the area surface area of roots will get increase obviously in return the fungus get the carbohydrates as well as shelter from the roots amanita is usually found in amanita this is very famous you can see in the cartoons also the red color with yellow spots amanita will be found in pinus so where in the Rosula is found in fagus. Rosula in fagus and amanita in pinus. Let's see the next thing that is about endomycorrhiza. So, what is this endomycorrhiza? Endomycorrhiza is a type of mycorrhiza fungus. Does not form pseudo parenchymata sheet, so fungal hypha will enter intracellularly, means inside the cell. Intracellularly, in cortical roots. So the intracellular fungal hypha formed branched structures in cells of the roots, called arbuscule. Arbuscule. so due to some reason due to the same reason the mycorrhiza is called vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza vesicular so vesicular arbuscular mycorrhiza so vm increases the fertility of the soil actually vm is important for phosphate nutrition as well so phosphate nutrition vesicular arbuscule arbuscular mycorrhiza so phosphate nutrition it is very important and endomycorrhiza you can see for orchids so an orchids usually orchids are epiphytes that will be growing on the other plants and on this it has a fungal association that is so, so uh, superb thing and the main family members you will be seeing is zygomycetes you have uh, corticium and you have uh, rhizoctonia etc angiospermic saprophytes which the root systems are poorly developed here so in angiospermic saprophytes so they do survive only because of mycorrhizal fungi armillaria fungi are mainly found in orchid roots that is armillaria because the orchids will be epiphytes this is entirely depend on the other plants so parasitically it's a kind of parasite so here root system is not well developed so it will depend on fungus for its absorption armillaria that was the example for that uh, this kind of fungus you can see in orchid roots and you have a, some of the ectomycorrhizal genera are i'll give some of the examples here ectomycorrhizal endomycorrhizal habiloma lecaria pisolithus 
Endomycorrhizal, it is glomus. Gigaspora. And sclerocystis. Yes, sir. So these are the very important things regarding mycorrhiza. Okay, let's start with the other thing that is virus, venom. So virus is nothing but the venom. So viruses. So they are the submicroscopic and uh, you should not tell it as cellular. These are acellular. They are submicroscopic. Scopic. And uh, these are acellular. And which uh, it is smaller than 200 millimicrons or 200 nanomicrons. 200 nanometers or 200 millimicrons. These are obligate uh, intracellular parasites. These are obligate. If what we call it as intra obligate in the sense without host there is no life for them so that's why so the, that's why we don't call virus as living or non-living because in the host only it will be living outside the host it is non-living so they have either rna or dna as genetic material no virus will contain both rna as well as dna and virus consists of a nucleoprotein as well as genetic material. So we have two things, nucleoprotein as well as genetic material. The nucleoprotein is non-infectious, but the genetic material is infectious. They can pass through bacterial filters as well. So they have a characteristic mode of multiplication. Once it enters into the host cells, it takes control of the whole biochemical machinery of the host cell and directs the metabolic machinery to synthesize their own components. So that happens with the bacteriophage as well. Once the bacteriophage enters into the bacteria, the virus bacteriophase enters into the bacteria. So it takes control over the bacterial genome and makes the bacterial genome to synthesize the viral DNA. Later on, the bacteria will burst and that will release the viral D viruses, member of viruses. So let's see the living characteristic features as well as non-living characteristic features. So first we'll go with the living part. So living part consists of, there is no protoplasm. Pro protoplasm is absent. Enzyme system is absent. Okay, no respiration. So they can be crystallization like chemicals is possible. They do not grow on culture medium. That is very important. They are inert outside the host cells. Means they are non-functional outside the host cells because uh, inert outside. They are autocatalytic and they don't have functional autonomy. And coming to the so these are, sorry, non-living characters. There is no protoplasm. There is no enzyme. There is no respiration. There are inert outside. And they don't grow in on any culture medium. You can grow bacteria on the culture medium, but you cannot grow this virus on the culture medium. And they are autocatalytic. 
means they can increase their own thing no nothing is needed for them and they lack functional autonomy and coming to the living characteristic features the living characteristic future are nucleic acid they contains nucleic acid that's why we call it as living as well as non living as a result they can synthesize the protein from their coat for their coat also they use ribosomes of host only so they that's what they take control of the host they can multiply inside the living host cell they can multiply they have antigenic properties they have antigenic properties they show mutation you see covid covid has undergone many mutation so on the basis of above characters it can be said from transitional group between living as well as non living you can't tell it as living and you can't tell it as non living so it is the both the things chemical composition so let's see the very important chemical composition of it so it consists of two components only nucleic acid core it can be either rna or dna and protein coat right so nucleic acid it may be either rna ribonucleic acid or dna deoxy ribonucleic acid and generally in plant viruses you can see single stranded rnas so you can only see one strand and but uh, in cauli cauliflower mosaic virus and potato leaf roll virus the dna is present example for dna in plants is cauliflower mosaic virus and potato leaf roll virus cauliflower mosaic virus and potato leaf roll virus here in this both cases dna is present cauliflower mosaic virus and potato leaf roll virus generally in animal viruses either single or double stranded rna double stranded dna is present okay and uh, let's see uh, the rna is present in certain viruses we'll see the list rna virus we have influenza flu influenza virus which is uh, single stranded rna so you can write it as ss rna single stranded rna it will be very easy influenza is single stranded rna and you have uh, raus carcoma which is uh, single stranded rna aids which is again uh, ss rna single stranded rna poliomyelitis poliomyelitis virus this is again single stranded rna rio virus rio virus is double stranded rna rio virus is ds rna double stranded rna and single stranded rna virus aids which carry few molecules of reverse transcriptase enzyme which copies the d rna into dna so the reverse transcription uh, is that's why we call it as retroviruses so aids is a retrovirus because usually what is transcription converting the dna to rna is transcription but what is reverse transcription converting the dna so converting the rna to dna is reverse transcription that happens in uh, retroviruses and we have the protein coat so what is this protein coat it is known as capsid so the outer protein coat is capsid 
and it is made up of a single units called capsomeres number and size and structure of capsomeres are vary and the capsomeres are arranged in a helical manner actually in a symmetry so that's why in the nuclear core and capsid we all together we call it as nucleocapsid so central core plus capsid nucleocapsid an additional covering is also present in some viruses around the capsid it is composed of lipoprotein so that's why those viruses we call it as lipoviruses so the, those are uh, myxovirus and herpes virus and the first ex extracted virus we all know tmv tobacco mosaic virus so you can see the helical rna will be like this and the helically arranged capsomeres yes. so the capsid will be arranged helically so this you can see in ncrt textbook as well so these are the capsid capsomeres so you have capsomeres and you have the central lumen tobacco mosaic virus is the most uh, thoroughly studied virus and uh, this virus is actually discovered by d ivanovski ivanovski in 1892 these are rod shaped virus which is measuring around 300 nanometers to 200 20 to 200 nanometers the 20 nanometers there is a helical stimen symmetry you can see the capsomeres are arranged helically and it is having single stranded rna and which is uh, 330 nanometers and it consists of 6400 uh, 6400 nucleotides It's very fascinating to know the nucleotides also. The capsomeres are two thousand one thirty capsomeres. It is two one three two thousand one thirty. Two plus one is equal to three, so two thousand one thirty capsomeres. And uh, the five percent RNA will be there. And ninety five percent is protein. and coming to next influenza virus which is again single stranded rna size 80 to 120 nanometers these are spherical viruses these are spherical virus and uh, these usually infect the respiratory tract So this having helical symmetry as well, and ten uh, percent will be RNA. Ninety percent is protein for this. And single stranded RNA, you can kill this virus even in for sixty five degrees Celsius also, and but uh, they are more active in low temperatures. okay and the next we are going to see regarding bacteriophages bacteriophage virus so virus which infecting the bacteria we otherwise call it as bacteriophage but it has double stranded dna so ds dna and bacteriophage was been first discovered by f w twat and felix d 
Heril. Hershey and Chase discovered the hereditary material DNA in the T2 bacteria phase. Hershey and Chase. So they are the one who discovered the DNA in uh, T2 bacteriophage. Through radio tracer technique, they got discovered. And next is cyanophase. Cyanophase. The virus which infects the blue-green algae, that's we call it as cyanophase. So which is being discovered uh, blue green algae that has been infected by cyanophase and this has been uh, discovered by Saffer, Mann and Morris. Cyanophase contain uh, DSDNA because uh, you can find for bacteria as well. The structure of cyanophase is similar to the bacteriophase. Okay. So bacteriophage, it is very similar. Next. So in bacteriophages, the generally DNA is present, that is MS2, F2. S, a single stranded RNA is also present. So generally DNA is double stranded. In uh, bacteriophages, we have many different types of bacteriophages. Generally, it is double stranded DNA. And we have E. coli phase also, which is uh, affecting the Escherichia coli. E. coli phase, uh, which is affecting uh, Escherichia phase. This also is having, this is having single standard DNA, SSDNA. So structure of bacteria phase. So you can see the head part will be like this. Okay, and uh, we have the head part. Neck, neck is present here. Neck is present here. And we have this thing. Neck. Head, neck, neck, this is the neck part. And we have the tail. This looks like a spider, obviously. And we have the head, neck, tail, and tail fibers. And we have the collar here, head, neck, collar, tail, and tail fibers. So this is having tadpole-like structure. It consists of head and tail mainly. So head is like a prism. So this length is 950 angstroms. And breadth is uh, 650 angstroms. So the head is joined by neck, by collar. You have the collar. And tail is hollow core actually. And surrounded by tail sheet. At the end of the tail part, so you have six tail fibers. So these are attached. And functions of the tail fibers are two main things. One thing is, one thing is absorption of phase particles on the surface of bacterium. And enzymes that secreted by these fibers helpful for killing the bacterial, for lysis of the bacterial cell wall. So that things, so this is a bacteriophase. What you are seeing here is bacteriophase. And let's see with the next category. Now we are going with this third category. So we finish the part of virus and next we are going with viroids. Viroids are actually only genetic material you will be finding. The molecular weight is actually less when compared to virus. So for this, you have to remember the scientist's name, T.O. Diener, in 1971. Discovered some new infectious agents, which is still smaller than uh, viruses. 
these are called subviral infections so subviral very smaller than virus subviral infections so viroids can only be very low molecular weight rna so single stranded rna will be there and no protein coat will be there for this and because nucleoprotein will be absent viroids will cause potato spindle tuber disease potato spindle tuber disease and chrysanthemum stunt chrysanthemum stunt citrus exocortis citrus exocortis cucumber pale fruit etc so cucumber pale fruit viroids can persist infections and so uh, never recovered yes so very like permanent infections it may lead due to absence of uh, protein coat viroids also called naked d naked virus naked virus and in viroids rna uh, you will be finding 246 to so in viroids rna single stranded rna we have 246 to 388 nucleotides are present there is a they possess a power of replication and so this so far which you have to remember the potato spindle tuber disease chrysanthemum stunt citrus exocortis and cucumber pale fruit and next it is uh, next we'll go with the last uh, the next last before one is prions misfolded proteins let's see about the prions part prions the smallest proteinaceous infectious agent smallest proteinaceous infectious agent so if you remember about the three british scientist t alper d hagi m clark discovered some infectious agent which are even smaller than viroids so they coined the time term prion but the credit goes to the professor stanley b stanley b prusina for the detailed study of prions so nobel prize was won awarded to professor prusina in 1997 for the significant contribution prions lack their own genetic material dna and rna they consists of specific macromolecules called proteins and the prion proteins are prep we call it as so according to prusina in most of the animals the prion proteins is generally associated with chemical substance found in nerve cells of the brain so prions with uh, kuru so laughing death disease of man so which is kuru disease of man which is otherwise called as laughing death disease of man and crohn's fell jacobson disease of humans and animals so we otherwise call it as the mad cow disease so we mad cow disease mad cow disease for cattle and prions will cause jacobs disease and next it is uh, dg gad dusek was awarded the nobel prize for the research of prion based disease okay and let's see the very important point h virus like h virus likes the t4 lymphocytes h 
acquired immunodeficiency syndrome. This is the disease caused by HIV. So these likes the T4 lymphocytes, thymus activated lymphocytes, which provides resistance to the organism through production of antibodies. The virus kills the T lymphocytes, that is T helper cells. Hence the resistance of host is collapsed. The man is infected with different kind of infections. This is known as death warrant. Next, dengue fever. We'll study about dengue fever. So this is transmitted by Aedes and Culex mosquito, which is Aedes aegypti and Culex fatigans. Fatigans, mosquitoes. Plants and animal viruses do not have their own infection power. So because the plant virus infect with the help of insects called aphids. And animal virus will be depend on mosquito. Plant virus mostly depend on aphids and animal virus will be on mosquito. So you have plants, animals. Plants uh, will take with aphids. Animals take with the help of mosquitoes. Some of virus depend on other virus for infection as well. So that viruses is known as satellite viruses. So tobacco satellite virus. So tobacco satellite virus. The virus depend on tobacco necrosis virus because single stranded RNA is present for this infection. And if you see the viral diseases of plants, you have a mosaic formation. You have leaf rolling and curling, yellowing and vein clearing. dwarfing and stunt growth. Chlorophyll and other pigments are changed to, into liquid to, through the virus. So the pigments are not synthesized. Growth and life duration of plants is reduced. You can see the blisters will be appear on the leaves and flowers. Of course, due to high growth rate of virus, so shape of them will be abnormal. Due to high metabolic activities, so the necrosis also will take place. And next it is uh, uh, the disease. Some, let's see some of the diseases that is caused by, plant disease caused by viruses. So binomial theory is not accept, applicable on virus. So according to Gibbs and Harrison, the named viruses given by cryptogam. So we have uh, viruses with cryptogam such as one pair, means type of nucleic acid, like uh, they have given the cryptogam, one pair, that is types of nucleic acid. by number of strand in nucleic acid. So number of strands in nucleic acid. For example, let's see D for DNA, R for RNA, one for single strand, two for double strand. 
and uh, second pair. Molecular weight of nucleic acid in lax. So you have uh, molecular weight of nucleic acid in lac by percentage of nucleic acid in virus. Third pair. Shape of virus by shape of capsid. Yes, is perical. E is equal to elongated. X complex. And you have the fifth pair. Types of infester, infester host. by type of vector. For example, A for actinomycetes, B for bacterium, F for fungus, I for invertebrates, B for vertebrates, S for cedar plants. So for example, if it is cryptogam of TMD, so you'll be like uh, R by one, means RNA, single stranded, or uh, two by five. So two lakhs percentage of two lakhs of nucleic acids by five percentage of nucleic acid, or E by E, elongated and elongated, or uh, S by A. Seeded plants and A for air. So influenza virus, you will be writing it as, uh, for example, if it is influenza virus, R by one, RNA one stranded, two to three lakhs by 10 percentage. Seeded plants, so spherical, by elongated, vertebrate by actinomycid, sorry, aphid, vertebrate through air. So this is how the nomenclature of plant diseases by viruses are seen and the naming. Important points are such as pox virus is also called VIP virus. Virus infects that yeast we call it as zymophase. Cauliflower mosaic virus is double stranded virus. And potato spindle tuber viroid, the protein coat is absent. So these things you have to remember. Okay, so far, uh, so the lichens part is remember, uh, reminding, we'll see in the next coming video. So these are very important points about mycorrhiza, virus, viroids, and prions. Thank you.